This is the Soul Filled Sisterhood Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, licensed marriage and family therapist and an empowerment mentor for women. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute, nor is it to convey professional, psychological, financial, or medical advice. If you could use such services, please seek them out from someone you trust. Now here is today's episode. Episode 72. And before I dive into today's episode, I'm going to invite you to head on over to my website, NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash assessment and find out where you are with any perfectionist thinking or behaviors that may be holding you back in your life. Are there some fears that are driving you and under that umbrella of perfectionism or not? This is not a psychological test or assessment or anything like that. But there are definitely some things that I list on the assessment that I'm going to talk a little bit about in the episode, but you've got a way to go over and just kind of see where you are and how you're doing with it. Again, Nicole Burgess, coaching.com forward slash assessment. Now let's dive in. Well, welcome sisters. In the next three episodes, we're going to be talking about perfectionism. Some of the signs that that may indicate you are a perfectionist and remembering perfectionism, kind of like the HSP characteristics, it's on a spectrum. Some of you are going to have more than others regarding perfectionism. Some of you are going to be a lot more highly sensitive than others, and that's all okay. Not Nobody's right or wrong in this. It's just acknowledging that. The thing with perfectionism is remembering what you've learned, you can unlearn. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about some of the signs that may indicate you're a perfectionist. I'm going to talk about the characteristics of being an HSP and how perfectionism can play a role in this if we're not mindful about it. I'm going to share some of my own personal stories about what perfectionism looked like for me and some of the struggles that I still go through. And then in the next episode... I'm going to talk about, in episode 73, I'm going to talk about where those beliefs can actually come from, where they stem from. And then in episode 74, I want to talk about how they impact every area of your life because it can, it can just sneak up in so many areas if you are not mindful about it. Okay, so first, let me share some signs that may indicate you are a perfectionist. Are you always busy? And do you struggle with relaxing? Do you have high standards for yourself? Or maybe you have really high standards for others and you find it hard for them to actually live up to them. Are you critical of others? Are you highly critical of yourself? Are you afraid to fail? Maybe you're afraid to make mistakes because you see them as bad. Maybe you're afraid of disappointing others. Do you ruminate or overthink things? Do you have trouble being happy for other people's successes? Would you rather do things yourself than have someone else do them wrong? Do you struggle with being spontaneous? Or maybe it looks more like you have trouble sleeping, you have some insomnia, Maybe you've got some stress-related health issues going on, like constant headaches, high blood pressure, got lots of gastrointestinal issues going on. There's going to be more things that you can look at in an assessment that I've created. So if you go out today's show notes in episode 72, you can find a link to actually take a little assessment to see where you're at, like how many things that you kind of mark off or what you identify with. Again, this is not right or wrong. You're just trying to get a baseline to see if these really fit for you or not. So now I want to pop over and really talk about what Dr. Elaine Aaron says regarding being an HSP, a highly sensitive person. And if you don't know what that is, if this is the first time that you're joining joining us here, you can go out to episode nine and you can hear the traits of a highly sensitive person. So in this episode though, one of the characteristics Dr. Aaron talks about is we love to consider every detail and possible outcome before acting. I find that really true for myself because it's like, I want to do it right. I want to do it right the first time so that I can be done with it. 
right? Whether it's how I invest the money, how I invest my time, how I invest my energy, what this may do for my business going forward, what it may do in my personal life type of thing. And so she said, the majority of people though, they tend to make decisions more quickly. So for those that are non-sensitive, they may view us as, hey, we are, we're slower in deciding, but the fact of the matter, more often than not, we're truly more aware of the risk and the benefits, and we end up tending being more accurate with those decisions that we make. So the, the thing that she talked about in one of her books was, you know, then people may be labeled that or may put the label of, oh, I'm a perfectionist. Well, again, if you don't meet some of those other tendencies, those other thought patterns, those other beliefs, I'd be very cautious of what that means. Perfectionism is really more about the fear of what others will think of you. It's the fear of not wanting to be humiliated or feel ashamed or being blamed for something. Healthy striving, healthy growing is you create these goals for yourself and it's about self-improvement. It's about going after, I don't know, some business goal that you have or some other goal that you have in your life. But you do that because you want to grow and learn. It's healthy striving. It's not worrying about what others may or may not think of you as you go towards that goal. When we're stuck in perfectionism, it can be very self-destructive. And, you know, you've got your inner critic that comes out, you put yourself down, you, you really get, it's like this self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a habit loop, basically, that you can get into. That if I just do this perfectly, live perfectly, look perfectly, then everything in life is great and I am protected from all things that may hurt me emotionally, physically. And again, that's not true. You're not able to actually manage the ebb and flow of life and those ups and downs in life with resiliency. Let me give you some personal examples of what I mean by this. So one example is when I was growing up and I was in high school, my parents used to pay me for my high grades that I could get. And unconsciously, what that did for me was it reinforced my beliefs that in order for me to actually be seen in the family or to be loved, I really needed to achieve a specific, a specific um, academic score level or a specific GPA. And that would say, yep, I've now achieved it. That's what my parents wanted. Now, they didn't actually say that at all to me, but that's how I internalized that through the filters that I had. This became an extrinsic reward versus the intrinsic reward for me. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm going to encourage you to go to episode 45 on emotional quotient and emotional intelligent, where I talk about what that means to have the resiliency to bounce back from these things and to be internal or external uh, focus of control where that comes from. So then when I got into college and I was going for my undergrad, I got into this marketing class. It was part of my requirements and I ended up getting D's on tests. And then in the class, I think I ended up getting like a C. That devastated me. Those test scores that came back that were low and that overall C was like, oh my gosh, what had I done wrong? Who am I? I just, I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to live up to other people's expectations. That was all that thought process that was going on for me at that time, when the reality was, sometimes I understood stuff, sometimes I didn't. I know for a fact, I did not ask for help from that teacher. I never ever asserted myself and went up to ask for help. I may have talked with some of my classmates at the time, but not too many of them because I was so embarrassed by the scores that I was receiving for my test and all of that. So again, it reinforced my loop that I wasn't enough in my head, that somehow I was, I was causing basically harm to others, which I was not. It was my grade, my path, all of that. But I, at that point in time of my life, I just I was not clear on that. So let me give you another example. In high school, I knew that I wanted to go into the field of psychology because I loved learning about the brain and I find humans fascinating. I just do. And the teacher I had in high school, he was just a, I call him a wacky and fun psychology teacher. And I loved it. 
but I ended up ignoring going after that degree in majoring that in my undergrad. I minored in it, but I didn't major in it. I ended up majoring in accounting. And what I did at that point in time, I allowed my good girl mask to really step forward and she was the one who guided me she's like no 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 you need to follow the rules you need to listen to what your parents say about what's the safe path you need to play it safe don't you don't want to make them mad because you don't want to listen to them I really I followed that good girl and what ended up happening was ugh, I just was very unhappy following that path and if you don't know what I mean by a good girl I'm going to say go to episode two and you can find out if you do some of those same type of behaviors or have some of those same sort of thoughts. In my 20s, I was much more focused on my accomplishments because, again, I thought that would get me the approval of others, that I would actually feel worthy at that point in time. And like I said, when I didn't follow my path of going into the psychology arena, I ended up feeling more irritable. I was more anxious. I felt disconnected from what I was called to do in this world. Because again, my perfectionism was running me. That good girl following the rules, playing it safe, was running me. And so that irritation that would come out, I'd be like, well, I know things better than, I don't know, so-and-so over here. Or I'd step on my self-righteous box. And, you know, I've got it all together and you should too. There's the shoulds again. It all ended up becoming a nasty, vicious loop because I kept playing around with those beliefs. And again, they weren't all conscious yet. When I finally decided to follow my true calling, and it started out, again, I went back to grad school through transpersonal psychology. Then I got my license as a marriage and family therapist, and I'm now a coach. Things began to come in with ease. Now, does that mean that, again, my perfectionism doesn't sometimes kick up? It does. It totally does. But I am much more aware of it and I'm able to catch it. I'm able to give myself some grace so I can switch those things around. I was listening to something the other day that I had forgotten about. So if you've been listening to me on any of my podcast episodes You will hear me when I'm doing interviews. It's like, I'm curious about, or I will encourage you to get curious about. I say curious a lot because that's how we we do our own inner work. That's how we make changes in our life. Instead of judging our thoughts or judging the beliefs or judging others, we get curious. And curious comes from a place of love and from a place of grace and from a place of observing versus being in it. So if you, don't ever, if you don't have information about something, though, if you didn't even know that it was a thing or that it could actually happen, let's, let's, for example, so you didn't know that people actually spoke French in the world, you wouldn't be able to even get curious about it because you didn't even know it existed. So that's part of where this episode comes from today. I know there's a lot of information out there about perfectionism, and hopefully you've been more aware of it. And if not, it's not a big deal. You start where you are. So I'm going to encourage you today, go out to the episode show notes, look at that quiz and or assessment and see what sort of beliefs, thoughts you have that indicate that you may be a perfectionist. Because when you know that, now you have the ability to begin to change that. You have the ability from letting that perfectionist woman <laughs> run your life or you begin to run your own life where she doesn't get to be in control over everything again. It's beginning to say, I'm going to break this habit of this self-destruction that I'm in because I want my confidence level to go up. I want to feel more expansive in life. It's time for me to play bigger in life. It's time for me to go after my true full potential versus hiding behind the armor from hiding behind playing it safe. It's time to really up level because you can and you're truly worth it. You're not living this life to get the approval from other people. You have a place in this world. You have a mission in this life, whatever that may be, whether you've got it figured out or you don't. It's saying you're enough. 
no matter where you are. It's beginning to break free of that good girl facade. It's, it's beginning to break free from that perfectionist armor because you think that's going to keep you from feeling humiliated or embarrassed. It's not playing to the fears anymore. Saying, I, as an adult, I can do this differently. And if you're wondering how I have transformed from what I talked about in high school and in my early 20s to where I am now in my life, grad school was a big game changer for me. We had to do our own inner work in grad school before we could even sit with clients. And that meant we had to have our own therapy. We talked about transference and different things through our classes, our own experiences. All of that began to open my eyes to, wow, not everybody thought the same way. And that began the big shift. And then through the years, through therapy and also coaching as well, all of those things helped me get to become more aware of my patterns, those beliefs that really didn't serve me. And the reason why I say is, yeah, I still struggle with this at times. I'm, I'm, I do call myself a recovering perfectionist because every time I up level, every time I step into something new, that old tendency, those old thoughts sometimes want to pop back up and like, oh, well, you're not going to be able to do that. So-and-so can do it, but I'm not sure you can. So I want you to know it's absolutely possible. You totally can become more aware of this, change that thinking and get to a place of observing and being more kind and gentle to yourself. Because let me tell you, when you are in a different space than perfectionism, there really is a lot more joy and ease and freedom in life. And I hear it over and over and over from the clients that I work with, how much they appreciate stepping into that space where it was challenging at first and really uncomfortable, yet they were so happy that they made that decision because they're just living differently in their life and their business is different and it's possible for you too. The other thing is, ladies, part of why I think I'm so passionate about it and I really haven't talked much here, I do more locally than I do podcast-wise, is I see this over and over and over in my clinical practice with teen girls. I still have a big practice that is really for the teen girls. I see it over and over though that the stressors, and it's not all from parents either, it really isn't. It's from the culture of the schools, it's from our own community, it's from the culture in, in general, where it doesn't honor the HSP characteristics or traits. But so many of the girls really think they've got to have the perfect grades to get into the perfect college, and then they'll have the perfect whatever in their life, and then everybody's going to like them. And it's really breaking through so many of those myths. So as adult women, the less we are playing that perfectionist kind of role, that perfectionist thinking, it's breaking that for the generations coming up behind us. Because they're our next leaders. They're our next ladies who are going to be help running our world. And so when we can show them how to do this in a healthier way, the healthier striving, now we're creating something new and different for the next generation. So I hope you found this information helpful. Again, I'm going to encourage you to go out to the show notes today, look at that assessment, take it, see what you think. And then stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to talk about where some of those belief systems really can come from and some ways that you can begin to work on letting them go. Until next time, thank you for listening. Curious about where you stand in perfectionism? Head over to NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash assessment. Take that short little assessment that I've created just for you and see how you do. Right or wrong, just an assessment. Take care.